for your final, you're going to have to label this exact model of the skin. So I wanted to go over it with you, okay? Um, let's start with the skin and how many layers it has. The skin itself has two layers. And then we have this semi-layer of the skin here, the cutaneous membrane, which basically just attaches these top two layers to the rest of the body. The outermost layer, or most superficial layer of the skin, is the epidermis. The epidermis is made out of stratified squamous epithelial cells, and it has five sub-layers or strata to it. And from most deep to superficial, we have our layers because... Super Giro loves cheese. What are they? They're the stratum basal, spinosum, granulosum, lucidum, and stratum corneum is the outermost uh, strata or layer of the epidermis. The stratum lucidum is only in areas of the body where we have no hair, which is the our palms and the bottoms of our feet. Let's move down to the Dermis, all right, the dermis is made out of connective tissue. It has two different layers. The upper layer is called the, I'm just going to abbreviate it, it's called the papillary layer, and the lower layer is called the reticular layer, okay? Um, this is the hide of our skin. This is where the stuff is located in our skin. Um, so if we can see, we have um, hair follicles, right here and we have sweat glands and we have sebaceous glands we have blood vessels all right um, so this is the happening area of our skin the um, dermis because it is vascular is actually what is supplying the um, epidermis with blood and nutrients and removing waste etc and as we know as we move from more deep to superficial with the layers of the epidermis, um, these layers end up becoming dead. Um, because what happens is that these cells, as they go through mitosis, they push up and away from the dermis, which is their source of blood and oxygen and nutrients and all that stuff. Okay, so the outer layer of the skin, the stratum corneum, is a dead layer of skin that's completely cornified or um, full of keratin. Also in the um, epidermis, just something to notice right here, we have these cells called the melanocytes. Those are the pigment producing um, sites. The epidermis really has two main types of cells. They have keratinocytes that are producing keratin that give us that waterproof shield, and then we have melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells. Um, and that pigment, that melanin, is going to determine what color our skin is, and um, it's also going to be protecting our DNA or the sunny side of our DNA um, from UV, UV radiation or UVA light, UV light, um, excuse me. Um, the third layer of our skin, that's really not a layer of our skin, but again, it just attaches um, the cutaneous membrane, which is made out of the epidermis and the dermis, is the um, subcutaneous layer, which can also be called the hypodermis or below the skin. Um, it is a layer of fat or adipose tissue that connects the epidermis and dermis cutaneous membranes um, to the um, deeper body tissues or structures. Okay, let's look at some other structures on the inside of the skin here. Um, we have, like I mentioned, we have a sweat gland or a sudoriferous gland that exists in the dermis and its opening is out here on the surface of the skin. We have two different types of sweat glands. We have eccrine glands and aprocrine glands. Um, those glands are um, going to So we have two different types of sweat glands, like I said. We have the acrocrine glands and the eccrine glands. Eccrine glands are all over the body, and they produce that salty kind of sweat that we're used to seeing, that water substance. And then we have the apocrine sweat glands that are located in the axillary and inguinal regions of our body, and they produce um, a yellowish, a different type of consistency um, type of sweat or substance, and, and uh, researchers are not quite sure why we have that. Another structure is our sebaceous gland that is producing sebum or oil. Um, that sebum is produced in the gland and many of our sebaceous glands dump that sebum into a hair follicle to lubricate the hair so that it's not brittle and doesn't break easily. Um, another structure that's located in the dermis is 
um, our hair, all right? And we have hair that is actually born in the epidermis, but then it, its follicle ends up taking root um, into the dermis. And so this area right here of the hair is called the hair follicle. And then we have the shaft that ends up extending outside of the epidermis here. Um, we have our hair that can stand on end. How can it stand on end? Because our hair follicles have these um, erector pili muscles that are attached to them that pull the hair um, and hell out to stand on end. And I like to think about a cat when it's afraid. Um, it has all those muscles that pull that cat to make it look puffier or bigger. Um, and then another structure that I want to look at are our blood vessels. Typically these are shown in red and blue down here. Again, the dermis is our vascular layer of skin. It's supplying the epidermis with um, its uh, oxygen, taking away its waste, nutrients, and things like that. So these down here are blood vessels that would be shown in red and their arteries and then blue for our veins. This down here is just a sensor, and you don't necessarily have to label this. But you will need to know this structure um, on the final, so I wanted to give you a heads up.